Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here, and today I'm going to be reviewing and going over those assault variants that came along in the Weapons Crate update. So, the M1917 Patrol Carbine, Machine and Pistol Experimental, Shogun and Nozzle Slug, and the Ribberol 1918 Optical. It's not exactly going to be a flashy, in-depth review on each of those guns in the traditional Weapon Guide format, as I've pretty much already talked about the guns in a lot of detail in their own individual reviews. But this video is going to be highlighting the main qualities of those newer variants, letting you know how they're statistically different, and what that means in terms of gameplay. So you're basically getting four mini guides in this video, and I'm quite literally going to be jumping to conclusions, giving you all the relevant information you need to know to see how those newer variants function in comparison to their original counterparts. So I'm going to kick this guide off with probably the most interesting variant that came along in the whole update. The Machine and Pistol M1912 P16 Experimental. This variant doesn't just have a longer name, as it also functions in a completely different way to the Storm variant, having some of the most drastic changes to its stats and the way it generally performs. The gun deals the same amount of damage as the standard Storm variant, and it holds the same amount of ammunition too, having a magazine capacity of 16 bullets. So yeah, it's still not going to hold very much for a fast firing weapon. But one of the main differences is the fact that the Experimental variant doesn't spew all of its bullets out when you hold down the trigger and it instead fires in two round bursts. So every time you tap the trigger, the gun's only going to shoot out two bullets, allowing you to manage your ammunition a little bit easier. Another pretty big thing about the P16 Experimental is how it doesn't fire at 900 RPM, but instead fires at 1200 RPM, an increase in 300 RPM over the Storm variant, which is really bloody fast. You're probably not going to notice this change all that much, due to it shooting in two round bursts rather than in full auto, but that extra speed basically allows for your bullet groupings to be a little bit closer together, and they'll hit your targets faster too. Meaning that at close to medium ranges, the gun should feel like it's firing one really powerful shot for every trigger pull. Because you've got 16 rounds per magazine, you can essentially fire the gun 8 times before you'll need to reload. And with close range damage being as high as 26.5, allowing you to kill in 4 bullets up to 12 meters, you can pretty much kill a target in CQC with 2 pulls of the trigger, dealing about 53 damage each which quite nicely translates over to four shots, as long as all four of those bullets make contact with your enemy, that is. This makes the P16 Experimental feel like a supercharged close to medium range sidearm, packing a pretty mean punch every time you fire it off towards another player. Though the damage can drop down to as low as 15, which is actually the same as a few of the secondary weapons, like the M1911 and P08 pistol. Plus it's also got one of the lowest muzzle velocities in the entire assault class too, with its bullets flying through the air at just 350 meters per second. So it's best to take into account the fact that the P16 Experimental still isn't really a brilliant long range gun, even if it might be a little bit more manageable to use over the fully automatic Storm variant. Another thing that's different to that Storm variant is its recoil pattern, as the Experimental variant's actually got a higher vertical recoil value of 0.79, as opposed to 0.63, giving it a little bit more upwards kick per shot. Though despite having less stability, the experimental variant is going to be a tad more accurate, due to its horizontal recoil being lower, at 0.36 instead of 0.48. So this is going to make it seem more precise, probably allowing you to land shots on target further away a bit easier than with the Storm variant. And it's also best to know that the experimental variant's got a smaller first shot recoil value of 1.58 times, kind of similar to the MP18 experimental, and this is going to help to reduce the recoil a bit per shot which is a pretty important factor for a gun that fires in two round bursts. The last thing to point out is the fact that the P16 Experimental is kitted out with an optical sight, which can seem a little bit awkward and unnecessary at times, though it might help you line shots up with targets a bit further away. Don't let the optical sight fool you into thinking that it's going to give the gun similar spread statistics as the other optical variants though, as the P16 Experimental has actually got more in common with the MP18 Experimental regarding its spread. It's got a higher spread decrease value when aiming down sights, allowing you to regain more accuracy quicker after each shot, in a similar way to a typical factory variant. Plus it's also got a lower aim down sights base spread value than the Storm variant when standing still, so it's generally going to be a more accurate weapon overall, but it'll have a lot less spread when you're stationary, increasing its precision even more. So you might want to stay still when you're taking on someone outside close quarters. Overall, a pretty nice variant that's a lot of fun to use, and it gives the Assault class something really unique that can naturally be very effective when used defensively. So next up is the M1917 Patrol Carbine, which still retains quite a lot of its main stats over from the Trench variant, but this one's got its very own mid-range patrol sight slapped onto it, mainly tweaking the gun's accuracy stats and giving it a bit of a new aesthetic. 
The damage is still the same as the Trench variant, so you're still going to be able to kill him 3 bullets up close. But this also means that it could take up to 7 rounds to take someone out in the distance. So despite having a scope attached to it, that could give you a better view of your targets and make it a bit easier to line shots up and lead their movements over range, it's still a fairly slow killing gun, taking quite a lot of bullets to kill. Not exactly something that can really rival a medic or scout rifle for long distance engagements. Though with that said, the M1917 Patrol Carbine's got a muzzle velocity that's a little bit higher than the average assault gun, with its bullets travelling at 460 meters per second, just like with the trench variant. And so it's probably going to seem like a more reliable weapon to use for longer range gunfights, perhaps over those early medium ranges, than most of the other assault weapons, giving it more usability over a wider range, with it being quite effective up close and slightly further away too. Where the trench variant has lower hip fire spread, allowing for better accuracy when shooting from the hip, the patrol carbine's got less aim down sights base spread, plus it's also got a lower spread increase value in general when you're aiming down those sights too. Its recoil pattern is exactly the same as the trench variant, but those lower spread readings for ADS definitely impact the gun's precision, helping you to keep that scope lined up with an enemy and fire multiple shots one after the other as quick as you can tap the trigger, until that enemy falls to the ground and dies. These lower spread stats for aim fire are definitely complemented by that mid-range scope, making it easier to acquire targets further away and keep that crosshair locked onto them whilst opening fire. And despite the M1917 carbine not exactly being a fantastic choice to bring along to the battlefield with long range gunfights in mind, the higher degree of accuracy you'll have over a lot of the other assault's fully automatic weapons should be enough to allow the gun to perform better than them over medium ranges, even if the M1917 might fire at a slower rate in semi-auto. A bipodded Ribby Roll 1918 might still be superior for long range fights, due to it dealing a higher amount of damage over longer distances and therefore allowing it to kill in one less bullet against someone further away. But now it's got some competition, with the M1917 Patrol being a bit more portable and having a higher level of accuracy with that scope. So although it might take an extra bullet to kill someone in the distance with the M1917, it's also easier to line up that crosshair with targets and stay precise without the need of a bipod. And with that scope being so clear, it also makes lining up headshots a much easier thing to do too, allowing you to cut down the time it takes to kill even further and make better use of those bullets whenever you can. As for the Shogun Inertial Slug, this variant, as you'd probably expect, is going to function in a very different way to the Buckshot Firing Factory variant, and is going to behave more like the other slug variants already in the game, with the gun firing off a singular projectile instead of a cone of multiple pellets. But don't be fooled into thinking that it's got the same sort of damage stats as the Model 10A Slug and the Model 1900 Slug, because it doesn't. Where the other Slug variants can dish out a maximum damage of 112 up close, allowing them to kill in just one shot up to 11 meters, the Shogun Inertial Slug can't actually kill in one shot, with it having a maximum damage of 75, which dropped down from 34 meters to its minimum damage of just 34 at 60 meters. Headshots are still going to be affected by a 1.8x multiplier though so you can still kill an enemy player in one hit by planting one of those Shogun Slugs into your opponent's head, so long as that enemy is less than 40 meters away. But otherwise it's typically going to take two Slugs to bring an unweakened target down over medium ranges up to 45 meters, but then it'll take three beyond here, basically giving the other Slug variants a 10 meter advantage for being able to kill in two shots over distance, with them being able to hold on to that two shot kill for up to 55 meters. The Shogun Slug variant might seem to be at a little bit of a disadvantage on the face of it when you're looking at those damage stats and comparing them with the other variants, but despite the gun dealing an overall lower amount of damage and not being able to pack as much punch over longer ranges than the other variants, it does fire a lot quicker than the Model 10A, and it can also hold three more shots than the Model 1900, which will have to reload after firing off both barrels. So in a way these factors help to balance the weapon out, and fit it in more so as a slightly less brutal gun, but perhaps a more reliable and probably more dependable weapon overall. Sacrificing some power in favour of some extra perks that the other two variants lack, making up for their weaknesses, whether that be in the form of a faster rate of fire or having a larger ammo capacity. It's also key to remember that the Shogun Slug variant might seem like a less lethal option when compared to the other Slug variants, but when you put it next to its own buckshot firing alternative, you'll be able to take people out a lot more effectively over range, and still be able to deal a relatively deadly amount of damage at close to medium distances too. You'll have to be more precise and line your shots up on target properly if you want to get those slugs to land, but the Shogun Slug variant can still be a very effective killing machine in the hands of an accurate player, and perhaps might be best suited for those early mid ranges more so than the likes of its buckshot firing counterpart. 
So last of the assault variants that came along in the weapons crate update is the Ribrule 1918 Optical, which brings along a few stat changes and alterations from the original factory variant. The first thing you'll probably notice, and assume from the name, is that the gun's got its own close to medium range optical sight fitted onto it, in place of that pretty clear looking iron sight that we can see on the factory variant. The differences from the factory variants are all mainly spread and accuracy related, along with the fact that the gun's gonna look visually different in ADS. So there isn't any sort of secret damage or fire rate change, as it's gonna deal the exact same damage, kill in the same number of rounds, fire at the same speed, hold the same number of ammo and reload in the same sort of way. So it's pretty much the same gun. It's even got an identical recoil pattern too, so you should be familiar in the way that the optical kicks around because of this. But the optical variant has been given a lower amount of base spread when both moving and standing still. This should make shots more accurate in fully automatic aimed fire. It also means that bullets are more likely to connect with an enemy, and so long as you're keeping that sight lined up with them, shots are less likely to fly off target due to spread. Hip fire doesn't benefit from the optical sight, so it's going to have a similar amount of accuracy as the factory when shooting from the hip. Though the rubber roll optical does get to keep its bipod, which can come in very handy for those ranged gunfights. And that lower spread, combined with the increased accuracy that the bipod provides, definitely goes in the gun's favour, making it even more effective for holding down positions and shooting enemies from afar. But the inclusion of that optical sight isn't all good news, as although it adds extra benefits for aimed fire by lowering the base spread, the rubber roll factory variant still has its own advantages over the optical having a lower first shot recoil multiplier of roughly 1.1 times instead of 1.3, and with it also being able to recover from both recoil and spread faster once you stop firing. What this means in layman's terms is that the factory variant is going to be a tad more suitable for tap and burst firing, with it kicking up a bit less when you first start to shoot, and because it's got a higher spread and recoil decrease rate, the gun will return back to its original position quicker after firing it off, allowing you to begin shooting again from its initial starting point sooner. So the factory variant might not be as precise as the optical due to it having a higher amount of spread, but you'll be much more effective when you fire in shorter bursts, which can often be a really good way to counter the gun's kick, to take on enemies over longer distances a bit easier. This might make the factory variant seem like a more suitable choice for those of you who like to tap fire your way to victory, and it might give you a bit more of an advantage for longer range gunfights for this reason too. But the ribber roll optical might generally be a more accurate one for closer range showdowns with fully automatic fire being more precise due to its lower spread values, and so some players might prefer this feature even more. Though I've got to say that personally, the optical variant seems like it has quite a lot of visual recoil, and this might make it seem less appealing and generally harder to use in a lot of situations. So that's my guide on the four assault variants from the weapon crate update, and my lowdown on how they tie into the game and compare with their other variants alongside the other assault class guns. Make sure you stay tuned to see my guide on the four scout variants that were also released in the weapons crate update in another video coming very soon, and check out my Annihilator Trench review that's already up on my channel right now. Give me a like if the video helped, and subscribe for more Battlefield content, old, new and upcoming. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in that next episode.